everybody. Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you. Oh my heavens. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. How Hello. are you? Gita, it's good to see you. Bill Collier, how are you? Amy, I see you once in a while. Becky, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, same as always. <laughs> Older. Us too. Well, yes, yes, but you still guys all look about the same. So yeah. I might have reckoned. Hi, Mark McKenzie, how are you? Oh my <laughs> gosh, Vanessa. Long, long time. Still we'll together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Hi, Manu. How are you guys? <laughs> Amy, I said I see you once in a while. You, you're, you're muted, kiddo. Amy. Yes. There you go. Hello. Now Audrey Stefan needs to come out from behind that Eric Fallon. Yeah. Yeah, she's on her way. Okay. No, you. I'll turn the volume up here. Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. We'll give it just a couple more minutes for people to sign in. Oh, I'm trying to turn up our volume. What's up? <laughs> now you can mute. Okay, Kim, should we go ahead and get started? That sounds good, Dr. Metting. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I'd like to formally welcome you to the virtual reunion for the graduating class of 2000 from MCO. <laughs> oh, I'm Pat Metting, president elect of the University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Sciences alumni affiliate. And I'm gonna be your host for this event. And it's truly a special privilege for me uh, to host because uh, for those of you who may not remember me, <laughs> I was Associate Dean for Student Affairs and one of your physiology professors when you were in medical school. In fact, I started as Associate Dean the same summer you started medical school. So the <laughs> class of 2000 is actually the first class that uh, for whom I went all four years as Associate Dean. So hello and welcome to you all. We're excited to have about a third of your class on the call tonight and just a few housekeeping things uh, to start. Throughout the session, you can communicate through the chat box uh, at the bottom of the page and you can either chat to everyone or select who you wanna chat with. Um, make sure you figure that out before you hit send. Uh, <laughs> Uh, through uh, otherwise we're going to ask you to stay muted unless directed to or unless you want to speak because that'll help avoid interference and some distracting background noise. Uh, but when you are called on or wish to speak you're going to need to unmute yourself because neither the co coordinators nor I are able to do that. And then we also want to make you aware that we are taping the, this general session but we will not tape the conversation in the breakout room. So you can feel free to uh, say whatever you want during that time uh, and you won't be recorded. So where did 20 years go? It's actually been 21 years ago today that you were celebrating your residency match day and envisioning as Dr. Seuss would say, Oh, the places you'll go. We said, congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, 
You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the one who will decide where to go. We warned you out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsie as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just go right along. You'll start happening too. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest, except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done, but on you will go into the weather Though the weather be foul, on you will go, though your enemies prowl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember, Life's a great balancing act. And will you succeed? Yes, yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 fourth percent guaranteed. You will move mountains, just wait and see. So be your name Surdy or Sani, Stuart or Lal, McCamey McCarrier, Mackenzie Patel, Melhotra or Walrod, Putka or Pabaru, Ravish Shenuda, Yankinson or Yoon, Hardy Lick, Ahmed or Nelder, Wilson Ganga Darapa, Ryder or Becker, Stefan Holland, Zentek or Collier, Finney Levine, Biedenbach or Alessio, Alessio, oh, the places you'll go. Like Graybow, Verhoff, and Soloff, You'll all be off to receiving so many great accolades. We're so proud of all of you and what you've accomplished over the past two decades. So sit back and enjoy some catching up and reminiscing, and then you can get on your way. A new mountain is waiting. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So at this juncture, I'd like to recognize the individuals who have made this event possible. The idea for this came from your classmate, Dr. Gita Surdy. Gita. And uh, she reached out to the alumni affiliate office in the fall and inquired about the possibility for a virtual event to celebrate the 20 year anniversary of your graduation. And Kim Kesters, who is our assistant director in the Office of Alumni Engagement and coordinates the alumni events for the College of Medicine, graciously agreed. And she and Gita thought match day would be a great evening to hold the virtual reunion. Kim enlisted Vanessa Stein, who's development coordinator in the UT Foundation for her expertise in virtual programming and the two of them adapted the Zoom platform for this special event. I'd also like to recognize and thank James Molnar, web and digital media specialist in Dean Cooper's office, who conducted the video tapings and created the virtual campus tour for tonight. So thanks to all of you for making this happen. And now, We'll do a quick roll call so you can see and hear from everyone from the class of 2000 who has joined in for tonight's reunion. As I call the name of each alum, please unmute and tell us where you live and what your specialty is. And if you have a guest with you on the Zoom, feel free to introduce them at this time as well. And 
please remute yourself after uh, your introduction. So, drum roll, here's the call. Uh, Ada Stewart. I am here and hello everyone. I am in Columbia, South Carolina. And right now I have two guests, but they're sleeping. I have Jackson and Lucas. I have two new cats. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it is just so great to, to see everyone. So um, looking forward to our breakout rooms and all that. And I can't believe Manu and Vanessa are in the same area. Oh my God. I know. All righty. We are both immunized and we believe that that <laughs> puts us at pretty low risk. Okay. Well, it's all right, next we have Amy Levine. Can you? Hello, um, I'm in Toledo uh, doing radiology. And uh, a few years ago, we actually, well, many years ago, we started having the residents come over, but uh, now we're officially back at UT for a couple of years. So I've actually been a, an assistant radiology professor. Um, for a couple of years. It's a little weird roaming the halls um, <laughs> again, but um, but anyway, we're only out there part-time. I mean, full-time, but we go to like 12 different places. So I'm only on-site part-time. All right, great. Audrey Steffen. Hi. Hello. You guys can hear me. I, um, I'm in San Diego, California which is my hometown. So I was kind of like an alien in Toledo for a little bit there. I do cardiology for Kaiser Permanente and I'm on staff at Kaiser, Palomar and Scripps Memorial La Jolla. I love it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Vanesh and Manu. All right. Vanesh uh, Patel. And in case you guys didn't remember who I was. Um, I'm here in Bingham Farms, uh, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. And I'm working at uh, McLaren Flint, ER physician, and uh, went into administration a little while ago, but I still do some clinical shifts, and I brought a friend. <laughs> Manu Malhotra, also emergency medicine, also a suit now for the most part, unfortunately, but uh, still occasionally seeing patients. And uh, I'm still with Henry Ford, which I have been since residency. So, so awesome to see you guys. Uh, everybody looks the same. I don't know how I that's know. possible. <laughs> After betting, even you look the same. Right. This is awesome, Della. So nice to see you all. Thank you. Okay, Bobby, Lal. Hello. How are you? Um, my guest uh, just left for a meeting and my kids are with uh, grandparents. Uh, my specialty is general surgery and I work at the VA and some long-term and skilled nursing care uh, doing wound care as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Gita Surdi. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad everyone joined. Um, I'm in California and I'm doing family medicine, outpatient um, medicine at the VA. And I also uh, participate as a volunteer for a community outreach high school program for students who are interested in healthcare. So I've been doing that for a few years. So if you come out to California, look me up. All right. Thanks again for this being your brainchild. Okay, how about uh, Dorothy Nelder? Dorothy, you'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, we'll come back to Dorothy. How about Janet Yoon? Hi, everybody. Um, I am in San Diego, California with Audrey, and um, I am on faculty at UC San Diego, and I'm a pediatric hematologist oncologist and very excited to be here. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, Kendra McCamey. Hello, everyone. Hi. I am in Columbus, Ohio at Ohio State. I'm doing sports medicine. Um, I actually work directly with Bryant Walrod, who had to work tonight or he would be on. He's going to try to jump on, I think. But um, yeah, that's about it. I've been here ever since I did my fellowship. Fantastic. Hi, Kendra. Dorothy, are you? <laughs> I think I've unmuted, but I still can't figure out how to make my camera work. Okay, well. <laughs> Um, can y'all hear me? Yes. So go ahead and. Oh, what does that work? Where you live? No, I still don't have a picture. I am so untechnical. <laughs> um, but I am in Brunswick, Georgia, south of Savannah, and I am uh, working for the hospital and an outpatient clinic. All righty, great. Lisa Wilson. There I am. Hi, Hi. I'm in North Carolina. Um, I work in Person County, which is just known for horrible weather. Um, I'm a family physician and I have an awesome schedule uh, and a 14 year old daughter who is 14. Wow. <laughs> She's 14, that should say a lot. All right, thanks. Now, who is JMS? Is that a trivia question, Dr. Matting? No, that's actually someone who signed in, but okay, I'll go we down. Have to to guess. We have to guess. Does anybody have any guesses? <laughs> like a John or something, maybe? <laughs> I'm going on Dr. We'll come back to it. How about Mark hey, McKenzie? Could be John, John Sanchez, Anya Sanchez. Oh. Hi, everybody. I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I do in, in, well, I did internal medicine for many years. For the last three years, I've been doing clinical research full time. I'm the medical director for dedicated research site. And, we done quite a bit of COVID stuff this last year, which has kept us busy, but happy to do it. I enjoy it. Life is good. My four kids, uh, three of which were born up there, are grown up now. Baby's 20 years old, and I guess we're all getting old, but happy for the education I got at Toledo. Good Great. Season. Thanks. Okay. How about Nancy Verhoff? All right. Okay. Can you hear me? Let's see, I have been in uh, Willard, Ohio all these years after finishing residency in Toledo. So um, I joined a private practice, I did family practice and I'm still doing that, but I'm now part of Willard Mercy. So I'm part of the Mercy system down here. It's a rural hospital. And um, yeah, I'm just glad to be a part of this too. Good to see everybody. Um, we keep pretty busy because we have four daughters. So <laughs> three, 13, 12, and a set of twins that are 10. So this is near my husband's hometown. He's the high school principal down here too. So we're kind of crazy that way. Oh, <laughs> All right, Rebecca Revis, is it Dubler? It's Dubler, yeah. So if, if you hear my husband screaming in the background, I apologize, but it sounds like Purdue's finally catching up. They were losing for a while. So my husband and my 14-year-old son are watching that. My daughter's upstairs. She's asleep. We got a volleyball tournament tomorrow morning. We got to be at Sierra Point at 6.15. So I'm going to probably cut this early, but I'm in Cleveland. So I am the medical director at a two outpatient um, ophthalmology ambulatory surgery sites. And I love it. It keeps me busy. This past year has been challenging with everything going on as COVID. I didn't know I would need a specialty in infectious disease, um, but pretty much a bunch of ophthalmologists pointing at me saying, come up with a plan. So I came up with a plan for testing and now a vaccine and everything at our center. So it's working out well, but it's been busy. Wow. Okay. Sarita Gangarapa Baker, I think. Sarita! 
You have to unmute. All right, we'll try again. Hi, everybody. Good to see everyone. Hi. Happy to be part of this. Thanks for organizing it. Um, I was in Philadelphia for residency and I met my husband there. So we've been um, married uh, shortly after residency and then we moved out to Denver and worked for Kaiser together as family medicine um, practitioners there in different locations. And um, we moved to Florida actually about almost two years ago. Um, we have a lot of family out here. Um, so we worked out there. We have two kids, a daughter who's 14 and a son who's 12. Um, and after we moved to Florida, uh, my mom passed away and my dad moved in with us and we decided we were gonna take some time off. So we're living the good life out here and uh, enjoying things. All right, super. Ryan Grayball. Well, I'm, I'm off mute now. Perfect. Yeah, so I'm out here in Las Vegas. So I'm sitting in my kitchen and this is our backyard. For those of you in the Midwest, we're sharing some of our, our fun out here. Um, I'm in uh, solo practice. I do hand to shoulder surgery in Las Vegas. Um, I've been here since 2006 with my wife and I. We just welcomed our, our first child, a seven, seven month old boy who actually was just uh, put down to sleep upstairs. So he is, uh, he's everything a seven month old can be. So all of you know that, but he's, he's already 22 pounds and he's, you know, military crawling all over the house. So it's, I'm, I'm getting back in shape so I can actually lift a little guy and take care of him. Um, hand to shoulder surgery is my practice. I also uh, started a, a company a few years back with surgical video where we actually do point of view video cameras and modified action cameras. So we're in about 27 different countries and we're an outfitting sur you know, surgeons and programs all over the country during COVID so that they can teach. We've even have remote um, skill sets. So like if you have a lab, you know, you want to do a lab for a surgeon, they've actually done that where they've done it in their, their state. And then they actually ship a camera and a cadaver to the doc. So, so I've been busy doing that and, and just invented a hand table device that the company is going to be selling that allows me to do a whole bunch of surgeries in the operating room. Because as surgeons, when we shut down in Vegas, you know, just like the rest of you all over, we couldn't do anything, but we were able to keep rolling with a lot of the, the hand surgery stuff in the ORs, uh, in the office better. So it's been, it's been fun, but um, that's pretty much it for, uh, for me here in Vegas. This Super. is exciting. I'm so glad you guys put this together. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, Sunita, Sani. Hey guys. Well, first of all, it's, it's amazing to see everybody. I haven't smiled this long in a while. So <laughs> thanks everybody for doing this for us. Thanks, Gita. Um, I just want to actually quickly say that I'm wearing an MCO shirt that I bought at the bookstore in 1996. <laughs> and it is quite the tight fit, but I did it. So <laughs> tried to, but um, I uh, stayed in Toledo for my pediatric residency after graduating MCO. Great educational experience there at Mercy Children's downtown Toledo. Um, and now I uh, live in California. I am the clinical chief of pediatrics here for our county in like central California. It's a city between San Francisco and Yosemite. So it's pretty cool. If you want to go to the beach, you just go two hours that way. You want to go skiing, you go two hours that way. It's pretty cool. And then I also do pediatric faculty for the UC Davis School of Medicine. They have a really a great um, residency program that I help there. And then I kind of help... Uh, one of the three head partners to run the business aspect of our medical group of 21 doctors. So, and then we, I uh, have a wonderful husband and a 13, 15, 17, and 22 year olds. So, oh my heavens. <laughs> nice to see everyone. You too. Okay, Teresa Shinuda. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to see everybody. I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia, basically very close to where I did my residence in Norfolk, Virginia, because I met my husband here and he dragged me back here because he's active duty. So, but it's not a terrible place to live. I'm solo practice, ophthalmology and oculoplastic surgery. I went out on my own in 2013. I went through some practices and just 
Just, I'm sorry, Becky, those are those uh, horrible ophthalmologists. They're so demanding. <laughs> They're such stinkers, aren't they? So <laughs> hence the reason I'm by myself. <laughs> It's all good. So, and I have um, a, a great husband and I have um, three children, 13, 13 year old girl and two boys, 11 and eight. <laughs> all right. Will Collier. Will. How's it going? I am down here in Columbus, Ohio. I'm at an emergency room just north of Columbus. I've been here for a while. Been doing emergency room ever since residency. And uh, most of you guys know, married to Don Zentech, also of the class of 2000. Rear out. We <laughs> call really loud, maybe you'll, she'll hear you. Um, we have two kids, a 15 year old daughter and a 10 year old son. And we've been, down here in the same house, doing the same thing, you know, for the last 16, 17 years. Good All to right. see everybody though. Done. Done. Come on out. Okay, I think that's everybody. Um, that JMS is actually Jen Schaefer, who's our development director. So she's just listening in. Thanks for joining, Jen. I think I've got everybody. If not, unmute and tell me so, at least for the students who are in the class. So now before we'll move on to our, our speeches, but before I introduce our speakers, I wanna start with a few history trivia questions. And of course they're gonna be in multiple choice format, but I promise there won't be any K-type answers. And for these trivia questions, if you click on the bottom of your screen, you'll see a reactions button in the lower right corner. And if you hit the raise hand option, if you know the answer, then I can call on you. So well, let's give this a try. First of all, how many people were in the graduating class of 2000? 100, 120, or 135? Audrey. I, hi, I think it was, uh, I thought it was 120, but I don't think they all, I don't know. I thought there were a few that dropped off, but close to 120. Well, that's right. It's actually 122 to be exact. Hey. And like I said, we're excited that about a third of you have joined us here tonight. So now press the unraise hand. And I'll ask another question. How many people were in the first class of medical students who entered MCO in 1969? Were there 25, 32, or 57? <laughs> no takers? You didn't read your graduation booklet? before signing on? <laughs> well, there were 32. And uh, next year, 2022, will be the 50 year anniversary of that first graduating class uh, from 1972. So uh, just a little frame of reference. Now, do you remember who the president of the Medical College of Ohio was when you were medical students? Was it Dr. Raymond Mulford? Was it Dr. Richard Rupert? Or Dr. Frank McCullough? Rebecca Ravis. That, that was Dr. McCullough. That's right. And you may recall that Dr. McCullough was also the father-in-law of one of your classmates, Sophia Grecos, Grecos who married Dan McCullough uh, before graduating. All right, a little more history. What was, when, what year was the merger between the Medical University of Ohio and the University of Toledo? Was it 2006, 2010, or 2015? Any idea? 
I mean, we were gone then, so. <laughs> the moo cow forever, so. I have a guess. Okay. I think it was 2010. No, actually, it was 2006. Oh, Della, I should have called on you. Um, MCO actually became MUO, the Medical University of Ohio, in 2005. In the very next year, in 2006, MUO merged with UT. And interestingly, the president of MUO, Dr. Lloyd Jacobs, was named president of the merged university. And, uh, and we actually have an MD who was recently named president of the university right now. So should have just left yeah. it MCO. It was just fine. No, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Now, just one more question for now. Who was the attending cardiologist who was director of cardiovascular medicine research when you were in medical school? Was it Dr. Edgar Starin, Dr. Peter Temesiarmos, or Dr. Christopher Cooper? If you get this Amy. one wrong, I'm going to protest. <laughs> Amy Levine. Yeah, it's Chris Cooper. You're right. Hi, yeah. <laughs> you got it. And uh, Dr. Cooper was actually the founder of the cardiovascular medicine research program at the institution, as well as the heart and vascular center at the University of Toledo Medical Center. And now I'm honored to be able to introduce him as the Dean of the College of Medicine and Life Sciences. And cool. I could give you a whole lecture on all of Dr. Cooper's accomplishments, but let me just give you a brief summary of his background before he speaks. Born in Cook County, Dr. Cooper grew up in Springfield, Ohio and received his bachelor's degree from Wittenberg University. He earned his MD degree from the University of Cincinnati where he graduated as the class valedictorian. And in 2019, UC recognized him with an outstanding alumni award. Dr. Cooper completed his internship in residency in internal medicine as well as a cardiology fellowship at the Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School in Boston. And he joined the Medical College of Ohio in 1994. And we're very fortunate that he has remained a part of the UT College of Medicine family throughout his illustrious career. He rose through the ranks to professor, director of the cardiology fellowship, director of the medicine residency program, director of the division of cardiovascular medicine, and then chair of the department of medicine. And then in 2014, he was selected in a national church search rather for his current positions as Dean of the College of Medicine and Life Sciences, and also executive vice president for clinical affairs. And in 2019, he was appointed to some additional responsibilities as Vice Provost for Educational Health Affairs at the University of Toledo. In addition, he was appointed to the rank of Distinguished University Professor, which is the highest honor that UT bestows on its faculty members. There's so much more, but without further ado, let me hand the microphone over to Dr. Cooper. Chris? Hey guys, good evening and thanks so much for joining us. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm part of the MCO family. My very first professional job was um, at the Medical College of Ohio. It looks like Kim is um, changing our view here for a moment. Um, so, so anyways, I spent a lot of my time at MCO and then uh, they changed the name of the place but didn't change my office much. Kim, did you want to throw, did, were you going to show some of those background slides? Because I think that's what the, the students might be, or the, the alumni might be more interested in. Kim, are you there? Yes, I am. Do you want, uh, can you see my slides? 
I can see your screen, but um, the, the slides aren't on. The slides are not on. No, hmm. no. Well, Kim, you know, I don't, I don't, our, uh, our alumni don't, don't need to, to watch PowerPoints. Um, why don't we just skip it and how about that? I'll just talk to them for a few minutes. Sure. That sounds great. I'll, I'll keep working on it in the background. So, you know, as I mentioned that, um, do you mind pulling off your screen and just that, that way we can see each other a little better? Sure. Great. Thank you. So, you know, I started at MCO in 1994 as my first job out of fellowship. And for the fact for the first, what was it, 10, 12, 13 years of my career, I was an MCO employee and then changed to the University of Toledo. You know, one of the things I'd like you all to understand is that MCO remains a strong part of our uh, identity on the health science campus. And <clears throat> right, wrong, or indifferent, many of us consider ourselves still um, uh, folks of the Medical College of Ohio. Um, you know, it's just, it's really a, a, part, a strong part of our culture. Um, things are a little different these days. Our class size is a little larger. We, we our, our uh, class is about 175 students. Um, of those students, about 70% come from Ohio and about a little over 25% come from Northwest Ohio. Uh, that's maybe a little different than during your time. I will say that about four or five years ago, we took a look at our mission statement and revised it. And it, the mission became to improve the health of our communities and region. Um, and that was pretty specific. We thought that Northwest Ohio, um, the, both the urban area and the rural areas in Northwest Ohio needed better um, relationships with the university and our medical school. And so we've done more efforts to recruit kids from our local community uh, to the medical school and uh, to try to retain some of them in our communities to help help things. And I'll show you some graduation data and match data in a minute. Um, I don't know what your class was like, but now there's slightly more women in our medical school than men. And that's pretty much been the national trend the last few years. Um, what's also important is that we have many more people of color in our class. We've been very intentional about doing our best to have our class look like the people that we care for in our communities. Um, and I think we're making steady progress in that direction. So roughly a third of our class now are um, uh, first generation college graduates, people of color uh, or um, from other underrepresented groups. And so, you know, we're proud of the, the, the um, progress we're making. Are we satisfied yet? No, um, we have more room to go, but again, uh, uh, you know, as we try to live out our mission of improving the health of our communities and region, that means we need to have a workforce, a healthcare workforce that looks like our communities. Um, and so, you know, that's been a, a point of emphasis. This last year has been pretty remarkable, I presume for you guys, like it was for us. Um, you, you know, we had some stuff in the media last week about March 11th, you know, the day that the world stopped and the plane stopped flying and there were no more contrails in the sky. Um, certainly for medical education, it was remarkable. You know, a, a personal story, the last week of February, I was in Ireland in Dublin for a, a consensus writing group for a, in my research area. And I know the, that week, Lynn and I were, well, you know, you think we should go on this trip because, you know, people are getting sick in, you know, Italy and, uh, you know, this and that. And we're like, oh, it's just going to pass, right? Um, so we're in, in Ireland the last week of February and then on on uh, March 2nd to our shoulder surgeon, I had my uh, shoulder thingy fixed by one of our orthopedic surgeons. That's the technical term, right? My shoulder thingy fixed. Um, they, I guess I'd torn my bicep tendon and a few other things. And so they fixed that all up for me. And I was off for the week and I came back the next week and we had a meeting on Monday morning about you know COVID It's really starting to get going. And I think it was at the end of the week that we um, just stopped everything. Um, we pulled kids out of classrooms um, on a Friday and on Monday, we had to set up a virtual curriculum, right? So, you know, the typical lecture hall stuff and anatomy labs and this and that, um, we had the weekend to figure out how we were gonna deliver all that content 
in a virtual mechanism. It was crazy. Like it was just crazy. And, you know, we had, uh, you know, you're talking about the video thing for the surgery, right? We had some of our faculty with GoPros on doing anatomic dissections um, and then streaming it for our students. I mean, it, it was just, it was crazy. Um, similarly, we pulled the kids out of their clinical rotations. The, you'll like this, the um, second year students were studying for step one, you know, that, that, you know, dedicated study period where everybody's churning away and um, they shut down all the testing centers. And so all of the kids, you know, were like, well, when can I take my test? Like, I'm supposed to take my test in three weeks, you know, make that happen. <laughs> like, I can't make it happen for you, right? Um, and, and of course, the third year medical students are getting close to their, you know, the end of the third year, which is always a great thing, right? Like, I can do electives and away electives, and it just stopped, right? Like, you're in the middle of your surgery rotation, we're like, oh, um, don't come in on Monday, and then Monday became Tuesday, and Tuesday became Wednesday, and then the next week and the next week. And then for our fourth years, you know, they were, I don't know, a week, two weeks away from the match. And we kept planning new matches, right? Like first we had this whole, you know, our usual in-person match at the Stranahan and, and then it changed to something else. And, and I think we got to plan G uh, by the time match day rolled around. Um, and then uh, for the, you know, as, as we got into May, you know, we, in Toledo, we had a lot of COVID. Um, my, my wife is from Honolulu and I'll tell you Lucas County where we live had more COVID deaths than the entire state of Hawaii. Um, and you know, Amy is a radiologist in town. I don't know how many chest x-rays she read with, you know, th this terrible pneumonia. Um, but we had people dying in our hospitals daily, every day, 30, 40, 50 people, you know, where are we going to run out of ventilators? And um, so, of course, graduation became a, a virtual thing. Uh, my daughter was a, a fourth year medical student in the graduating class. And so, you know, as dad, I didn't get to see her graduate, you know, and, you know, it's looking forward to hooding my daughter. So, you know, we participated in our house in the virtual graduation ceremony and my daughter set up folding chairs in the living room and put stuffed animals in them to be the audience. <laughs> and then. <laughs> You know, we watched the tape graduation ceremony um, on the on the computer monitor with the stuffed animals in the background as her audience, and and then I actually, as the dean, I did take her in the backyard and hood her, so that was that was pretty cool. Um, the good news is that uh, in June we got the kids back in, and we did a whole bunch of education, right, hand washing and PPE, and you know, really working hard to get our students back into the clinical environment as quick as we could, but as safely as we could, and you know, protect everybody, protect the faculty. Um, and so I think that that's worked out really well. And what our students have taught us is resilience. They've been wonderful. Um, you know, I met with a group of our fourth years yesterday and, and you know, they had their match ceremony today and, you know, they've been through a lot, but, uh, but it gives me hope that, you know, we're gonna continue to produce really excellent physicians who are gonna make the world a better place. And, and so, you know, that's been uplifting. So as bad as a year as it's been, and boy, I couldn't wait for the ball to drop in 2020, as bad as a year it's been, um, I'm so grateful for our students and the legacy that they create and how they're gonna go out in the world and make the place better like you guys do, you know, just like you. Um, I, I'll also tell you a little bit about the medical school. We've changed things up a few years ago. Uh, I became Dean in 2014 and our curriculum was old, right? It was very traditional. We still taught anatomy and then physiology and, um, you know, the world was changing around us and the students uh, wanted and needed a better, uh, more integrated experience. And so faculty, student, staff came together for 18 months, meetings and subgroups and this and that. And in 2017, we, in, we have introduced our rocket curriculum. Um, and there was a couple important things like we integrated around anatomy and physiology and disease state. So when you learn cardiovascular, you learn it all, right? You learn the anatomy, the physiology, um, the pathophysiology, et cetera. Um, and, and, you know, it's chunked by, uh, by system. The other thing that we did is I was concerned that our students weren't getting great career advising or career development. 
that I don't know what it was like when you guys were third years, but you kind of went through your third year and you saw what you liked. And then you said, okay, I got a match next year. What specialty am I going to pick out? And so what we did is we embedded career development um, into the curriculum starting the first week of medical school. And, uh, you know, we have folks come in and talk about different career paths. And then we have what we call our ICE program, which is early clinical in, uh, experiences where medical students, you know, very early on get integrated into clinical practices and they rotate through, take through surgical specialties and medical specialties and primary care. And so by the time that I, I'm hoping that by the time they get to their um, beginning of the third year, they're, they're already developing ideas about what careers may be appropriate for them and, you know, what their interests are. And really it's about trying to help people achieve their full potential um, and blossom in ways that they may not think is possible. And I think that that's really been um, very good. And in fact, that first class of the rocket curriculum um, is graduating in May. It's the group that just gra uh, just matched uh, today. And, you know, what we've seen is that they're doing better on the wards. They're, um, their shelf exams are better, they're better prepared. And so, you know, I, I think that it was really painful to redesign the curriculum, but in, in the long run, um, that effort was worthwhile. I'm very grateful for that. The other thing that um, we undertook in 2014 is I was worried about the um, experiences that our students were having. And, you know, I know some of you talked about your experiences at Mercy Children's Hospital or this or that. We'd become fairly insular and focused on UTMC the, or MCO Hospital, which is appropriate. You know, we own and operate it. The problem is, you know, oftentimes I'm a cardiologist, as was mentioned. I'd have 13 people on rounds with me. I don't know if you guys remember that when you were in medical school, the big cluster of ducks with the mother duck walking down the hallway. Um, you know, the problem with that strategy is that as a faculty member, it's hard to give any of the students the time and attention that they deserved. And a common narrative from our students was, you know, Dr. So-and-so doesn't even know my name. That's, that's not okay. That's not okay for our students that the faculty doesn't know the name of the student. That's not, that's not what you guys probably experienced in your MCO days. And so we uh, negotiated for a year and signed an agreement with ProMedica in 2015, Toledo Hospital. Uh, now called ProMedica. It's a 50 year agreement. Um, we've been able to create new rotations for our students and kind of stretch out, um, bring faculty in like Amy Levine, who's been a terrific asset to our students, um, to our residents. And, uh, you know, it's really allowed the students and residents to blossom. And so we're very, very appreciative of that relationship. It's difficult, right? Because we compete clinically, but then we collaborate academically. So there's not a day that goes by that I'm not pulling out what little hair I have left. Um, but that's a good thing because that means we're working to make a better environment for our students and residents. Um, about match day today, always an exciting day. You guys remember going through match. Um, uh, you open that envelope with fear and loathing and a little hope and joy and wonder what it's going to be. And there's always crying, right? It just depends on what kind of crying there is, right? Is it tears of joy or tears of uh, exultation or tears of despair. Um, sometimes it's all three wrapped into one. Um, so today uh, we had a really good match. And I would say that in the last couple of years, our matches have been really, really good. So, you know, our students are matching into competitive specialties like orthopedic surgery and ophthalmology and neurosurgeon, the things that they want to do. And we're very proud of that. Um, about a little over 40% of our students now match into primary care specialties, which is again, part of our mission to serve our communities and region. Um, so that's a strong point of emphasis, very grateful about that. Um, um, I mentioned that, and so again, you know, what we want is our students to have the opportunities to grow into, and, and so that's a, a strong point. I also mentioned our mission to improve the health of the communities and region we serve. So one of the things we've been doing is trying to stand up residency training programs that kids want to stay in, right? Um, I'm, I'm constantly pushing on the program directors and the chairs, hey, what are you doing to um, make these, these training programs that our folks want to participate in? And, you know, in 2014, we only had nine of our students stay in town to train. Uh, for the last couple of years, it's been around 25. So we've tripled that number. And that's really good for our community because, you know, it's the people like Amy Levine and others who've chosen to stay in Toledo or stay in our region 
you know, Nancy, a few others that are on the phone. Um, they really are the people who take care of um, the kids, the adults, the older folks with needs in our community and very proud of that. Um, we still have room to do better. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not the type of person who's ever uh, very satisfied with the status quo. And so I'll continue to push on folks. I mean, I, I want this to be a place where um, kids, you know, our, our graduates and graduates from other programs want to be a part of, and, you know, we're going to continue to evolve in that way. So uh, I'll stop. It's probably more than you guys wanted to hear, but I thought it was kind of, it would be fun to share with you the journey that we've been on. And, you know, I think I've been on with some of you during your time at MCO and know that we continue to grow and evolve. And um, hopefully you'll try to recruit one of our graduates into your practice. Would love that. All right, thank you so much for your comments and your leadership, Dean Cooper. And thanks also for taking the time to be here tonight to celebrate with the class of 2000. As you all have heard, there are many great things happening at UT College of Medicine and Life Sciences, and you can be very proud of your alma mater. Dr. Cooper has also kindly agreed to facilitate one of the breakout rooms, so feel free to join him later. Now, another quick trivia question. Who was Dean of the medical school when you were in school? Was it Dr. Richard Layton, Dr. Peter Goldblatt, or Dr. Amira Gohara? Oh, Gohara. Okay, Dr. Yeah, woo! All right. We all know that. <laughs> we all and, knew that. Um, so the students now say, go hara or go home. Oh, <laughs> go hara, go home, that's funny. But uh, unfortunately she's traveling tonight and couldn't be with us, but she did videotape a short message for you that, uh, that we'd like to play. Kim? Hey, Kim, all we see is your desktop. We don't see your video running. Fortunately, we did videotape that. So that's something that we can forward to you all. Uh, and she, she was, of course, sorry that she couldn't be here, but uh, Oh, there we go. I'd like to welcome all of you back home to your alma mater, our beloved MCO, where our motto at that time was enter to learn, go forth to serve, which I know you have all accomplished by serving your brothers and sisters around the country and might be around the world. When I think of your class, I think of your smiling faces meeting with me every day at 6.30 a.m. on the third floor of Mulford Library in the Dean's Conference Room to do case studies. And let me tell you, these sweet memories have lived with me through the last 20 years. So we had four year journey together and you all continue to have a special place in my heart, in the heart of your grandma, Gohara. Remember when I used to tell you about partnership, frame them, keep them close to your heart. So I continue to hold our shared memories close to my heart. So now let me switch gear and talk to you a little bit, give you a snapshot of what happened to the curriculum since you left us. You had your discipline type curriculum where each discipline was taught separately. Then in 2002, we changed the curriculum to the organ system where physiology, pharmacology, pathology were all taught together by system. And now we had a fully integrated curriculum. The other thing I like to share with you that we changed our name from MCO to the University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Science, which is really 
a beautiful description of what we all are about. And I can still see you close to my eye, see you in the library, in the corridors, in the hospitals, because you have always been the life of the medical school. And any medical school, the life of that medical school is are its student. Now that you are alumni, you are our ambassadors wherever you go. And you, I know you made us and will continue to make us proud by using your knowledge, skills, kindness, compassion to improve the human condition. So in closing, I wish you the best in all your future endeavors. Have a fun, wonderful, happy 20 year reunion. I love you all, your Dean and Grandma Gohara. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and um, besides being your, your dean and pathology professor, Dr. Gohar is actually a fellow alumna of yours too, because she completed her pathology residency here uh, before joining the faculty. And next, I'd like to introduce someone else who is near and dear to the hearts of all the medical students the Director of Student Affairs and Student Life, and my trusted colleague and dear friend, Della Croce. Everyone's clapping, Della. <laughs> well, guys, I don't have as many uh, accolades as to share with you as everybody, but, um, and when Dr. Benning asked me to do this, I was so honored. Um, I miss you all. Um, like I, I said, I retired, well, I retired in 2011. Um, I miss all of my students. Um, I don't miss getting up at eight o'clock in the morning uh, to come to work, but I do miss all of you and all of the, lo the lovely memories we've shared. You know, I said there aren't a lot of people in their life that can say they've known over 1,200 physicians. I am so proud of all of you. Um, I've been retired, like I said, since 2011. I have grandkids that are your children's age. My oldest grandchildren are 19 and my youngest is, I believe he's now 12 or 10, something like that. I can't even remember. Uh, my son and daughter are doing very well. Tony and I will be married 50 years this year. Um, and for us, I think that's a great accomplishment for anybody. Um, I do miss the contact with people. Um, it was such a privilege to work with all of you. Um, retirement is great. Um, but I, I like being busy and I like being with people. Um, I go out into the world. It's funny when I go to see a physician now, it's like, oh, really? You were a student. I see Dr. Abowd, remember Mike? And it's so hard because it's like, oh, Dr. Abowd, I remember you as Mike. And it's so hard to remember to call you Dr. Abowd, but I try. And so he's my ophthalmologist. And I said, see Dr. Kristen Bodine, who was a 1996 grad. Um, remember, I worked at uh, MCL UT for over 27 years. Um, Dr. Cooper, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. One of the reasons I retired was the merger with UT. Um, it was good in a lot of ways, but I found it hard to have the University of Toledo distinguish my students, graduate students, if you will from the uh, underclassmen or the college kids. You guys were such a different breed. You had different ideas, different paths, different goals. You were so motivated. You weren't interested in football and, and going out so much as what I found in with the, the younger kids, quote, if you will. But, um, and again, I was old enough to retire and you always need new blood. You guys are out there doing the great things for MCO. And I wish you nothing but the best. And I hope that you have fond memories of me. Like I said, I see a lot of you on Facebook um, and I love it. And yes, I am on Facebook because that's how I keep in contact with my students. And you're still my students. I know you're all physicians, but I love you. So it's nice to be here. Thank you. We love you, Della. We're so glad you made it here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo.
<laughs> MCO forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Della. And Dell is also gonna be facilitating a breakout room. So be sure to stop in and say hi. You know, it's 10 o'clock, so we're gonna move along here. Uh, we took longer on the roll call, but I think it was great that everybody got to say hello to each other. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce one of your own classmates, Dr. Ada Stewart, who was recently, she's recently taken the helm as president of the American Academy of Family Physicians. As you know, the AAFP represents over 135,000 physicians and medical students nationwide. And so it's a real tribute to the University of Toledo to have one of our alumni serve in such a pivotal position for influencing the healthcare system in this country. I don't know how many of you have kept track of Ada's path, but uh, she completed her family medicine residency at Richmond Memorial Hospital in Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, following residency, she served as the chief medical officer and HIV specialist at the Richland Community Healthcare Association in Columbia and East Hover. And since 2012, she's been a practicing family physician with Cooperative Health South Carolina and currently serves as lead provider and HIV specialist. As you all know, Ada was an active medical student leader at MCO and very active in organized medicine, became a member of the AAFP, the AMA, the National Medical Association, and the American Medical Women's Association when she was a first year medical student. So it comes as no surprise that she has held many leadership positions at the local, state, and national level throughout her career. Um, uh, notable among those, she um, served as chair of the AMA Minority Affairs Consortium Governing Council, and in 2009 was named by President Trump to serve on the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV and AIDS. Uh, you know, she was born and reared uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, in an underserved urban area. And so she's committed her career to ensuring that uninsured and low income families have access to high quality health care. And um, she's been recognized by several organizations for, for her dedicated service uh, to the community and uh, their health care. So please welcome your classmate, Dr. Ada Stewart. Thank you, Dr. Metting for uh, such kind words. And oh my goodness, I have some prepared words, but forget those. Um, I just, you know, this has been a remarkable, um, you know, I think about my journey uh, and it did start there at MCO as a medical student. Um, and, you know, being able to be elected and to serve family medicine in this capacity at this time is just um, unremarkable. And most of the, um, you know, folks ask me, how did I get to where I, I am today? And, you know, why am I doing this? Uh, uh, serving our, our country and our, the specialty of family medicine. And I think about the, the times that I spent there at MCO. I think about each and every one of you and the impact that you all had in my life. I think about Dr. Metting uh, and Della, and you guys know how many times I would come into your, your, uh, your office and say, I, ne I needed a letter of recommendation or I needed something to, to uh, make another uh, step as I look to uh, be part of the change that I wanted to see. And as uh, Dr. Cooper mentioned, you know, we really have to do more to uh, improve the healthcare of our nation. Uh, I really commend uh, you, Dr. Cooper, and, and your mission and uh, things that we really need to do to um, improve our health. Uh, that is making sure that the medical um, 
that folks that are, are there practicing actually reflect the community uh, in which they're serving. So thank you so very much. Uh, I just wanna again, thank you guys for again, uh, uh, being uh, who you are, being my friends and, and many of you all, I have had the opportunity as, to see as I travel the country, uh, not only as a leader within uh, the Academy of Family Medicine, uh, but also uh, as my service to the country. I don't know if you guys know that uh, I joined the military also uh, after 9-11 and uh, have uh, risen to the rank of Colonel. And actually I am on drill uh, this weekend. So I am still serving, but all of that goes back to uh, the education, the friendships uh, that I forged, the uh, relationship and all the things that I learned while I was there at MCO. Uh, and so I uh, just wanna take this opportunity to thank you guys and to uh, make sure that I let you all know that we have to continue uh, to do all the things that we can do to uh, improve the health of our nation at whatever specialty uh, that you are, uh, are in. And um, uh, I'm just looking forward to getting on the other side of this pandemic uh, and, and just moving forward, being able to travel and to also be able to um, really touch uh, more lives that I've been able to touch uh, this past year as president. Uh, and so as the first African-American president of the American Academy of Family Physician, woohoo! and I am so proud uh, for us as women in this month being uh, uh, National Women's Health Month uh, to, to really uh, help raise uh, the bar for women uh, as uh, Justice uh, Ruth Bader uh, Ginsburg said that, you know, we need to have more women in, in places where decisions are made and not just be the exception. So I am proud to be one of those and hopefully we can continue uh, to encourage our women and and thankfully we are now seeing more women going into medicine. And then for you fellas, uh, please encourage folks and be the uh, colleagues that uh, we need to be able to, to be uh, to raise to uh, uh, the level of leadership and to get into the C-suite. Uh, so thank you again. And uh, uh, I am just so honored, so honored to say that I am a graduate of MCO and uh, uh, just looking forward to seeing you guys uh, in person at some time uh, in the near future. So thank you. And, and Ryan, what a cute baby. Anyway, okay, thank hey, you. Thank you. So he's up and mama's doing stuff. So I'm on daddy duty. So he is, as you, all of you who have like 14 and 15 year olds who know what this is, but this is amazing, but you guys all know this. So, but uh, yeah, and I'm telling him, I went to school. I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures I've been showing. Um, I've got my scrap, I pulled out my scrap. Yeah, so Ryan's been showing yeah. pictures. And so that brings us to the slideshow that we've prepared for some memories. But really quickly, I see that Kristen Holland has joined us on the call. So Kristen, can you just say hello and, and where you're living now and what you're doing? Sure, hi everybody. I, uh, I've been in my pajamas and I sat down on the couch and said, oh, shoot, <laughs> I should have stayed in my clothes a little longer. <laughs> um, I'm in Milwaukee, um, so I'm a uh, pediatric dermatology. I've been here, I did my, um, went here for residency, stayed for fellowship and then stayed on staff here. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm serving as our medical director and, and chief of pediatric dermatology here. Um, and my path crossed not too long ago with Jonathan Thackeray. Weird as that is, he was like a consultant for a hospital for something. Um, and they called me in for to meet with the consultants. And, uh, and I'm like, wait, this is weird. <laughs> it's a small world, but it's nice to see everybody. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's Let's, uh, yeah, I try, actually tried contacting Jonathan to see if he could join us, but uh, he wasn't able. But um, Kim, why don't we cut to the uh, slideshow so we can go down memory lane here a little bit. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. Before we take a visit down there, 
I've got a couple other few fun memory trivia questions. What was the name of a favorite watering hole for decompressing and celebrating after exams? Was it Holy Toledo, the docks, or Doc Watson's? Kendra? Doc Watson. You came in? It, it's Doc Watson's. We Doc all remember that Watson's one. It was. OK, it's hard to forget that one. And it's still alive and well, surviving the COVID shutdowns from a year ago. Manu still owns it, by the way. <laughs> How about this one? What is the name of the Indian dance performed by a group of your classmates during the annual medical student trivia show? Was it the Bombay belly dance, the Mumbai mambo, or the Bangra? Banesh. Manu, Banesh, come on now. Banesh doesn't know. It was a garba. <laughs> Oh, it was Manu. It was the Bangra. That's right. 17 of you performed this brilliant dance for four years. And uh, I don't recommend this video game because of all of its violence, but I recently saw that Fortnite has introduced a Bangra boogie dance. If you want to check it out on YouTube. Anyway, one last one. How many married couples are classmates from the class of 2000? Are there two, five, or eight? Can we ask for clarification on that? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> not how well, many people are married, but like how many couples came from within the class? That makes sense. All right. Well, we had a few of them on this call. Oh, We've got okay. Jason and Amy Levine. I'm not absolutely certain, but I think the correct answer is five. We've got Jason and Amy Levine. We have Rachel Biedenbach and Reno Alessio, Don mm -hmm. Zentek and Will Collier. Gemma Har and Michael Abowd, and Rebecca All and Gorav Aurora. All right. So, Kim, let's start the slides if we can. Or Vanessa.
Fantastic. All right. Well, we're running so behind. What we'd like to do now is, even though he was scheduled for the end, we just have a couple minute video from our president of the uh, UT College of Medicine and Life Sciences alumni affiliate Mohammed Musa. Uh, Kim or Vanessa, could we get you to play that now? Dear MCO, University of Toledo, class of 2000. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Mohammed Musa. I am a graduate of this awesome med school, uh, 2004. So when you were leaving, I was starting. And I'm so excited to be a part of this uh, 20 year anniversary. Um, and it's so wonderful that you're doing this, uh, getting together, catching up on, uh, we don't wanna say old times, but previous times. And I'd like to take a few minutes here to just let you know kind of what's going on here at uh, uh, the University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Sciences Alumni Affiliate Board and, and, and catch you up on that. Um, we just wanted to mention that we really want you to join the Alumni Association. You know, I'm sure you get emails uh, all the time. So it would be great if you join the Alumni Association to benefit from seeing all the things that are happening and participating as well. I know COVID-19 pandemic right now has slowed things down a little bit, but there's some pretty amazing things happening. So please consider joining. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, yeah, check out the websites. Type in University of Toledo College of Medicine, Life Sciences, Alumni, and Google, any web browser, and it'll come up and you'll find your way to our sites. There's wonderful things happening like the COVID Chronicles. We're asking our alumni who are taking care of patients across the country to enter, insert, anything, stories, chronicles, uh, events, uh, publications related to COVID-19 and their experiences. I did it myself, and uh, it, it's a great opportunity to let everybody know. We're really trying to develop and grow this uh, aspect. So we would really like you to take the time to uh, look up these uh, uh, COVID chronicles, please. Uh, furthermore, I just wanted to mention that April 7th and 8th, please put that in your mind, April 7th and 8th, um, as, as the president of the alumni board affiliate, I have to encourage you to consider giving on the day of giving. There's going to be a lot of uh, uh, notices coming out in email and on social media to give what you can give uh, back. Um, it's the best feeling when you can give back to where you train to become a doctor. There's a lot of students in need right now, uh, believe me, uh, and, and to the point where there is not there are some students who don't have food. This is something that we've discussed at our last board meeting. So I, I, I encourage you to just take out that debit card or whatever you have handy and consider making a donation. I'm not gonna be shy about it. We, there are students who need, need the help. So please, please uh, consider that. And I just wanted to add, it's so awesome that I'm working alongside Dr. Metting and Kim Kester's uh, we've just submitted an application to um, be the um, affiliate, the University of Toledo affiliate uh, of the year. I think, uh, I think we have a very good chance of getting it. So I hope that these few minutes with you brings awareness that the alumni uh, board, the alumni association here at the College of Medicine and Life Sciences is very strong and very active and having an impact on the medical school. This is what I want you to know, and please, please uh, consider uh, contributing in any way you can. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best, and stay safe. All right, so um, Mohammed is also an associate professor of emergency medicine and director of our emergency medicine residency program, and he did his residency at Henry Ford. So I'm sure Manu, you probably- I already made the comment that he's going to get berated for sending a video message. <laughs> okay. I'll be calling him to let him know that in-person asks work way better. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. 
Okay, well, um, if you're if you can hang in a little bit, just a little bit more, we just now wanted to do a breakout session so that you'd have a little bit more time to talk to each other. We originally were going to do this for about 20 minutes, but if we could do it for about five or 10, I already mentioned we had Dr. Cooper and Stuart and Della serving as facilitators as well as myself. And we also have Dr. Crystal Hill. Uh, Crystal uh, is a graduate from the MCO class of 2001. So she was a colleague of many of you in a number of student organizations and activities. And she uh, is currently uh, serving on our alumni affiliate board of trustees. And so she kindly agreed to serve in this capacity. So um, just a couple of housekeeping rules for the breakouts. Um, they uh, have actually is, is assigned just... each of you to a breakout room, but if you want to move from one breakout room to another, please just select the option rejoin main session and type in the chat box which room you want to move to, and then the coordinators can assign you to a new room. And oh, for those... like speed dating or something? Yeah, sort of like speed dating. <laughs> hey, Dr. Benning, there's not that many people. Is it worth it to break this up or should we all just uh, take the last five, 10 minutes and just uh, chat? Yeah, it looks like there's not that many, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. I agree with Dr. Malhotra. Okay. Absolutely. I agree. All right, that sounds great. Crystal Hill, can you just give the hands up so we can see you? Okay, thanks for, for that. Well, who said that, Manu? So is there something you wanna say? Well, Vinesh would like to start. For, I wanna say a couple things. First of all, where's Ada? Ada, there you are. Ada, I gotta tell you, congratulations. But I think we planted the idea in your head when we went to Kansas City for that conference, okay? <laughs> And I, just want, remember that. <laughs> and I just want to say, I am surprised that they elected you as president because you almost got Manu and I kicked out of our hotel room. That's right. <laughs> did. So I just want to say that. And then Nancy, what's your hometown again? You're on mute. Yeah, Kaleida. Kaleida. That's yeah. Right. How do you yeah, but, that? Yeah. But I really, nodding. yeah. I, I actually didn't I, realize your name was Nancy because, you know, yeah. Kaleida. <laughs> do you want I'm to still, going with the rest of you guys? I, I'm still, hey, Banesh, I'm still in a small town. Yes, I know. And actually, don't laugh, but my new address these days is not Willard. It's a small town called Tyro, even better than Kaleida, right? <laughs> Is your like street address like four? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, yeah, we actually just moved into the country even further. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of a lot of farm fields out here these days. <laughs> You're our official small town girl. Thank you. I am, I'm <laughs> still doing it. <laughs> and, then, and then we can't forget about Sunny. You know, it, did we have some sun? We had some sun today, but I know it's a lot. It's a lot sunnier in California these days. Um, but the 49ers are still not going to win. All right, let's move on. Um, Kendra, where's Kendra? Sorry, they lost. Get over I'm here. It. here. Get over it. They lost. Uh, you don't no, want to say that to somebody. We've had a rough couple days, rough couple days. I um, take care of the women's ice hockey team who was in the Frozen Four and we lost oh, last night too. So it's yeah. been a bad 24 hours. And I did text Bryant. Hopefully he'll join us. Maybe you should shame He's, him. He in. just said he got home. Keep texting him. He said he him, just came home. Like joining us. <laughs> oh, uh, oh my, logging in, he says. So. Will and, look at Dawn. Tell her to poke her head we'll in. See. Yeah, yeah. Where the heck is Dawn? And Ryan, I love that generic background that you have in your um, screen there. It's beautiful. Love it. 
I wish I could. <laughs> well, well, we some of us aren't as cl close to the Midwest anymore, so we wanted to share. So yeah, but you guys are all now. You guys understand. I we conduct 24/7, 365 medical conferences. So if you happen to fly from wherever you are to Vegas and we get together for a drink and we discuss COVID or medical school or anything. Other than that's gambling, that's the business. only reason for Vegas to exist is for conferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a business trip. You understand? Brian, Brian last time I saw you, oh, I don't know if you remember, right Brian, but the last time I saw yeah, you was at the, the craft table. So, yes, exactly. Yeah, oh, that was, Who's the meeting host? What? If, Brian says he needs the meeting host to let him in. I'm not sure who the meeting host is. What, buddy? Brian Graybow will be in Vegas for about 15 hours on June 5th. On Tuesday? 50, where I, what, when are you getting in? June 5th. No, for about 15 hours. I'm getting in in the evening and uh, I'm meeting the kids in the Las Vegas airport. And then okay. we're doing a really insane family vacation through Bryce and Zion and Moab and up to Yellowstone. Oh, that'll be awesome. But we're staying well, the night in Vegas that night. So. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I've got, uh, that's my clinic day, so I'm done at five. So, so I will, On uh, Saturday? No, which, wait, the fifth, wait, when are you coming? So, you guys, might, the, you guys oh. might need to use the chat room. Well, so I'm, Ada, I'm trying to figure I, out how to put my... Hi, Brian. Ada might be the... Take your coordination the offline, guys. <laughs> hey, All right, I'm setting myself up. Who decided to grace us with his presence? Ada might be president of the AAFP, but who was president of the Family Practice Forum when you were second year students? None other than Brian Walrod. Brian Walrod. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Don't worry, I already shamed uh, Ada. Um, remember when she almost got you, Manu, and I kicked out of our hotel room? In Is that in, in, in D.C.? Kansas City. Jeez. Oh, Kansas City. Okay. The what were you doing that night? <laughs> D.C. too, probably. <laughs> Hi, Della. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, it's great to Paul see you. Paul says hello. Minutes, everybody just unmute, I say. What, what are you doing now? Let it rip. Yeah, I agree, Manesh, because it's, or Manu, whichever one of you, it's easier because <laughs> otherwise you can't hear it's laughing. One of the two. No hair. Or whichever. Yeah. You, are, you are both in trouble at the same time. So, hey. Constant garage of talk. Yeah, Always. remember, I was not to know about those meetings in D.C. or wherever you were. No. <laughs> I had the strict policy, if you remember correctly. But it seems to me a few things got away. Della, it's all Ada, okay? Oh, it's all Ada. Well, I did my best, but you know, yeah. even after but five years, I couldn't okay. do anything about it. She what can I say? Look how she turned out, though. Come on. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, okay. She had a good example. Brian, right, what are you doing now? Will, we're still waiting for Dawn. What is she? Well, how did come, say come on, hey. Will. Everybody so Brian... else is off mute, by the way, now. So yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Hey, I did want to bring something up. I told Della this. If you go to MCO, our composite is the only one that's actually missing out of all the composites on the wall. We have no composite. <laughs> Why? What? Well, was that the year that we were going to try to put each individual picture because they didn't take a composite? It. it probably was. I think so. And I think they COVID. were each individual. <laughs> Oh, how can I get to the alumni association if there's no composite? It's in yeah, no Reese's base. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll we'll have to talk with somebody about that. Uh, yeah, I think Please. so. The money's not going to flow that way until we get a composite on the wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's so nice to see all of you guys and to know that you're doing so well, so well. Mark, you haven't yeah, I had anything. Was, I was listening very intently. It was entertaining. Well, speaker, forever hold your peace, young man. <laughs> well, remember, I, I was old then when I was in school. Still old. Now. I remember. My youngest child is five years old. So that, and How old is she, Mark? Yeah, the baby. Uh, she was born the year we graduated. And, oh, yeah. So, 
So um, he's the last one in college. The other three have done. And what's interesting, none of them want to do medicine. <laughs> Gee, I, I wonder I, why. I, I tried hard, Smart. really hard, but I like said they didn't like my lifestyle, so they're, <laughs> they're choosing other people. <laughs> Good for them. Don't like the hours, right, Mark? Yeah, the hours were disappointing for them, but yeah. they got a lot out, out of it. So it was worth it. So are they in college or what? Uh, three are done. Um, two business degrees, one uh, education, and then uh, yeah. the youngest, she's doing speech pathology. Oh, wonderful. Good, good. 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 Yeah. Audrey, what are you doing these days besides working? Uh, well, I have uh, two teenagers. Somehow they're oh. running the house. <laughs> how old so they're 13 and 16 and it's like the opposite of my old life when you knew me because I grew up with three sisters and yeah. my dad was the only guy around for ages so <laughs> now even our bunny is a guy so I call it a you know what fast at our house <laughs> fantastic fantastic yeah, it's um, incredible yeah 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 yeah. Nancy, were you on a scholarship or did they pay? Did you go to one of the rural programs and they paid for part of your medical education or was that not? Yeah, Willard, right. Yeah. Yeah. The part when I joined out there. Yeah. And by the way, your nephew, uh, the coach is Vince. a um, pharmaceutical rep that comes down to our area. And I Vince. recognized the last name and I said, Do you know Della? <laughs> He's like, oh, yes, I know her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that makes me old, you guys, seeing all you guys. <laughs> so, Teresa, where are you? What do you do besides work? I would work? be the, the youngest Eight? kid. Yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> Ryan. Well, uh, we don't do much these days because my husband's on lockdown. Because the Navy's uh, on lockdown. But... Uh, well, we got a we had a nice pool in the backyard and a hot tub and Ooh. go to the beach and um, try to get out as much as we can. The weather's pretty temperate here. Is um, it? Yes. I mean, today was a little nasty. Yesterday it was in the seventies and today it's in the forties. So, oh it's, wow, it's been a little crazy lately. But <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's it's nice for getting outside. That's for sure. Good. Yeah, I still work out. I don't, oh. teach, I don't teach anymore. <laughs> I, I'm still in the gym. <laughs> does, uh, in the gym. does anyone keep in touch with Deshaun? Uh, Stuart? Yes. Only on Facebook. I saw him a couple years ago uh, at one of our family medicine meetings, and that was what? Wait a minute. We, we came to your house, Audrey. Yeah, I saw yeah. Deshaun at Audrey. Yeah, yeah, that was that, yeah, yeah. Oh, Do you remember that? 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 that was so long ago. I thought I had a dream. We all met in San Diego and we raided Audrey's house. Nice. <laughs> Her Anita, parents got, are still so got, great. <laughs> was that another one of those guys you want to know about? <laughs> if you have a contact form, send it my way. <laughs> San Diego vacations.com. I'll, uh, I'll be in Huntington Beach in um, August if anyone's. How far so Anita I'm knows here. about them. <laughs> I'll be seeing. I'll be seeing Audrey and Street tomorrow. So. <laughs> wow, you guys stay in contact then, huh? Does anyone know where Nick Wilson is at this point? Remember him? Oh, yeah, Nick. you know the cool thing. Oh, 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 Nick. Nick and I, I mean, I, well, what's great Nick. about this is, you, get, you know, you guys know, you lose touch, you move around, and you don't see everybody, but, you know. Yeah, that's right. Does, does, does anyone know what it's like? We just couldn't hold him up. <laughs> All Lisa, I remember, another we one. on a cruise. He drank as much of all of us on the cruise and we were at like Carlos and Charlie's and he had to get all of us back into cabs and get to the boat. And I remember Banesh, yes. you, you got lost. Awesome. Yes, and Banesh, Banesh, like we were like at the railing as they're getting- I got mad off. skills. Yeah, and Banesh comes mad. rolling up on the- I'm like, like a, a, I'm like a, you know, yeah, I got like a toddler. 
<laughs> yeah, that was the fun. Yes, we were. That was. Yes. That was I, I got directions. I know where. I know how to get anywhere. <laughs> so, Lisa, what's going on in your life? <laughs> you got on mute. You're mute. mute. You're still on mute. Sorry. I really thought. Uh, just talking away. Okay. <laughs> just uh, going to clinic and um, this whole time with COVID has been really weird with with um, not traveling because I'm used to traveling. Um, people think I'm Dominican because I go there three or four times a year um, <laughs> and I go to Vegas about three or four times a year. I'm into blackjack actually. Um, oh. So I, I love to, <laughs> yeah, there I'm all about blackjack. blackjack oh, so. <laughs> Just look over at the craps table, you'll find Ryan. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how I found him. <laughs> Very good. And Dorothy, how about you? What are you doing? Uh, I am in uh, South Georgia practicing family practice in a very small town. Uh, thankfully, we haven't been hit too bad by COVID. Oh, that's good. Um, although that is a funny story when he was mentioning uh, being in Ireland uh, right before COVID got everything shut down. Uh, my mom's birthday is March 9th. She turned 80 last year. Oh, wow. So I took, yeah, so uh, I took her on a cruise so I got on a plane uh, the end of February, was on a cruise ship in Norway, Northern Norway with limited internet access. Uh, we flew back March 11th. We got back two days oh. before the <laughs> Wow. Yowie. Yeah. You know yeah. what was going on? Yeah. So yeah. I, no, cause we had, I mean, we, this internet on the ship was crappy. So I didn't even start really looking into things until my dog sitter is texting me, are you guys going to be quarantined? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? So, well, I was having a knee replacement the day before they shut down everything. Oh. So, wow. So oh, we goodness. got that taken care of. Janet, what are you doing? Um, what am I doing? Um, Other than raising two teenage kids, was that what you said too? No, I mine aren't that old yet. They're getting there. Okay. They're eleven and eight. Okay. Um, Boy and a girl, girl, two girls, two girls, and oh, they keep me very busy. Um, but so much fun, and you know, working and just trying to hold everything together <laughs> as much <laughs> as possible. Um, but it's exciting. It's so good to see everybody. My gosh, it feels like. A million years ago, but everybody's exactly the same. So, and well, Vanessa, when Dr. Manu, you guys said, changed. <laughs> she said 2000. I'm like, that was 20 years ago. Are you kidding me? I know. You better bring Time, me a flies. Program. <laughs> Time flies, but it's great to see everybody. Yeah, it really is. Audrey, Audrey and I got Janet into Snapchat, <laughs> right, Janet? Yeah, little toe in the water. I'm so slowly coming into the social media game. I fought it for a very, very long time, but. I lost the battle with COVID. Yeah. I'm still fighting yeah. it. I, I still fight it a little. I don't do me Facebook. too. <laughs> My patients well, try to track me down on Facebook, so I avoid it. <laughs> hey, Becky, me. what's going on in your world? Your chat. I just hope to change. Nothing. Name. Nothing much. I got a 14 year old son that's almost six foot tall, so he I makes know. me feel short. Yeah, uh, he's imagine. in basketball. He's Good. super smart. So got a scholarship to Ignatius. So he's going to Ignatius next year. Oh, how um, wonderful. He, um, he is a really, really good kid. Uh, my daughter is 11 going on 19. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, my husband says she's just like me. I don't know oh, if that's oh, a compliment oh, or not. I don't know. <laughs> Um, she's spunky. She's smart. She's opinionated. She's going to be a CEO of a company someday. Oh, there, so. there you go. There you go. Uh, I uh, have a granddaughter at Bucknell and then I have a grandson at Lourdes. So wow. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're, they're doing okay. It's, it's so neat to, as a grandma, you, you can really do a lot of things that you can't do. Like, I don't know what I would do if they were students under me. I, 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 I'm not sure how I would react to some of the shenanigans that I look at now and say, oh, <laughs> Nina, they're just kids. Give them a break. I don't know if I do that anymore. So anyway, but 
Or the same well, way you've really been with us. You just kind of say, I didn't see that. If I didn't see <laughs> well, that, well, I expect right. to react. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, well, it's I good to see you, everybody. I, I hope we can stay in touch. So we probably people. need to wrap things up. Gita, do you have any final thoughts? Nobody put any more money in the meter? No, I just want to say it's been wonderful. And I think we should not wait for another 10 years to do I agree. another reunion. I think we should do a mini reunion in five years. What do you think? Yeah. We shouldn't you wait. Know, till 10. I, I want to just quickly say yeah. Being being in academic medicine, I hear a lot about all the different medical schools in the country and they all seem pretty cutthroat and everybody was competitive against each other. And I I can say with a hundred percent assurance, MCO class of 2000 in the way was a family and we did have our need to succeed, uh, but that was our personal need for to succeed. We didn't want to step over anybody to get to that success. And I think that's why we, we were all such a family 20 years later. And I, I'm just really, really proud of that. When I hear the horror stories of other people and their medical experiences they hated medical school and then you guys were my family especially being 2,000 miles away from my own so I just want to thank everybody for for a wonderful four years with my with my MCO family truly. Sunita I would agree with you 100% I work at the medical school here too and it's totally different culture we were definitely a group, a family, uh, hung out together, enjoyed each other's company, and I absolutely loved it. Thank you all. Yeah, I agree. My my best memories, I think I made in medical school. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say yeah. that I nominate Manu to plan the next reunion. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Amy, come to the news house. Take that from her. <laughs> Do it at the distillery. <laughs> yeah. No, we can't do it there, remember? Uh, that's right. Well, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Feel free to come to uh, Detroit. You got money and I already here. We'll we'll set everything up. We can all set right, it up. Ke 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 Kendra, you know what we're like. You were here. Uh, Ashish <laughs> is not on the call. He knows what it's like. You know, I was at Henry Ford. I was at Henry Ford for one year and my car got stolen in the first month. So I don't have a very good. So, so you, those are great memories. Yes. So that's done. <laughs> now your car is safe, as yeah. you know. And so Kendra, Manu, myself, Ashish, am I missing anyone from the class? Yeah, we all used to hang out. It was fun time, Vipple. It would be here, great right? to see you guys uh, here. So I think the next time it would really be amazing to do this in person. I, I, Gita, so great that you pushed that this happened now. But man, it'll be great to see you guys in person. Yeah, well, Dr. So we can do it in Toledo. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, you know, now that we are at the University of Toledo. There's uh, 13 colleges, and now all of you have kids, many of whom are looking at colleges. So maybe you can can think of us and join what we call Rocket Nation, and and then we can really have a big celebration in Toledo. You guys have a decent uh, hotel nearby yet? Yeah, it's called the, it's called the, it's called the Patel Residence. Yeah, <laughs> well, the Manning Residence, right, Doctor Manning? My basement is still open. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry to cut things off, but um, we've already kept our staff over uh, a pretty long time. So do you, do you, I'm afraid we're going to have to say goodbye, but we all know how to, to uh, get together virtually if we want to before another 10 years, right? Exactly. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Dr. Metting. Hey, well, thanks thank again you. to Gita thank and you. Kim and Vanessa and yeah. uh, all of our uh, facilitators and speakers. And uh, thank you all so much for taking time to join us. It was a great, great deal. Thanks, Dr. Metting.
Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much. Yes, bye. Hey, you. Bye. 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 I probably need to change that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta leave the other one. There we go. Yeah, wait. We can hear you. What's the, what's in this chat? Good night, Dr. Metting. Well, good night. We'll, uh, we'll talk again. And thanks. Uh, I'm like I said, the, the roll call took longer, but it was really a nice exchange. So we'll, uh, we'll debrief. Okay. Sounds good. Good night, Kim. Kim, Good night. Thank you, Kim, for staying on. And uh, you saw no problem. Much, you saw how much they enjoyed. It was it. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to mm -hmm. please give our thanks Manu. to Vanessa too. Will do. All Will right. Do. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night.